ever had a, a near death experience where you slipped off of something, billboard building, and you were hanging by your hand? Uh, nothing that extreme. Uh, there was a, a break. Thank God. What? Yeah, thank God, exactly. <laughs> you know, the thing that's, 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 that's funny too, I'll mention is, uh, when I started getting into like climbing up high and painting my name in high places, I, I, I went up on a, like a, you know, a, a harness, right? The, the idea was I would wear this harness and have like some safety measures that like, if I did fall, that I would then be like, you know, not die. Right. I bought the thing like, I don't know, two years ago or something. I've never even fucking worn it once. Um, because I'm worried that like, it will hinder my mobility up there or that the police are going to show up and I have to go, but I'm going to like be tethered into this thing now and I can't run anywhere or that I fall and now next I'm like dangling on like above the freeway and some truck comes by and like takes my head off or something. Yeah. Uh, but to answer your question, there was an I beam thing. I, I, you know, like shimmied out on and I was painting the thing and, um, I was holding on with my left hand. I remember there's like a little hole in the steel I beam that I, I could just fit my pinky in. I put my pinky in there and I, my arm was getting tired and I, the, the pinky kind of just like, it kind of just gave way and I, I was able to pinch myself and save it. But it wouldn't have been a, a certain death. I probably would have fallen, I don't know, not very far, 20 feet or something and maybe broken my leg. Actually, the most near death thing I had happen was painting a billboard at La Siena in the 10. I, uh, I had put a, I use it like a grappling hook gun and I, I shoot a, a leader line up through the ladder, which is way up high for the billboard ladder. It starts like, started up like two or three stories. Shooting the what? Like a leader line, like a little thin, like, okay, so it's a 22 caliber gun. It's a, it, it shoots blanks, 22 caliber blanks. And uh, it, it'll shoot uh, and underneath the, the barrel of the gun. It's got like a little thing that just has like, like thin twine, right? And it's got like a little cancer twine and it'll shoot this this like propulsion thing that will go up and you'll i try to shoot it like so you got the ladder that's like the ladder the, the ladder to the billboard which starts usually up high this one was rather rather high three stories up and uh anyways i, I hoist up a fucking rope ladder to this thing right anyways the billboard guys came by i'm painting the back of the billboard uh the light of the billboard poof, turns on 5 a.m right and i'm like that's fucking weird who turned the fucking lights on the billboard right well, the billboard company showed up coincidentally to change the fucking billboard out. They do that early, four or five in the morning, they change the billboards out. They also put a spotlight on the front of the billboard, but I'm painting the back of it. So, but then they go around back to put the fucking spotlight on me from the back. And then once they put the spotlight on me from the back, I was like, okay, they, you know, they see me. They've definitely probably called the cops. Uh, and so I'm time to get down, right? So I go to get down and I'm on the... The billboard ladder climbing down and I'm about to take my first step from the billboard ladder to now my rope ladder which I used to get up and right before I take a step to the bill to my regular rope ladder which I'm going to put my weight on um and fall in three stories because I looked out the corner of my eye one of the guys from the billboard company saw my line that was anchored to a fucking post that was between the sidewalk and the property I was on and he cut the line and it was a, it was a, a cement right there and I just saw the out of the corner of my eye luckily I saw the frayed rope end and I said what and I remember for a second, I'm like looking, I'm looking at the rope end and I'm whole, I'm still on the billboard ladder, thank God. And it's like slowly processing in my mind, like what has, like what has happened. And it, this is what has happened is he's cut that rope. I can't use that rope ladder down. I have no way down. I'm stuck on this roof. It's starting to rain. Like this whole thing, like my, I remember it's just like, I'd been up painting all night. It's like the five in the morning. And it's like, my brain is trying to process like, like it's like this this domino effect of like bad news after bad news after bad news after had I actually taken one more step onto this rope ladder and put my weight onto it, I'm gonna fall in three stories onto like my back. And that would hurt pretty badly. Mm. Yeah. That yeah, that was fucked. The, the the idea that he did that is like beyond fucked up. Like I get it, I'm paying the back of the fucking thing, but like that 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 was probably like could have been life threatening again. Yeah, I was stuck on that roof for a few hours. In the rain, pouring fucking rain. And then uh, when did you get down? I had to fucking break in. Okay, so I'm texting friends, calling friends. No one's picking up. I hit up like 12 people. Uh, yeah, I'm then taking a pee on their air conditioner unit on top of the roof. <laughs> and out of the corner of my eye, there's a hatch on the, on the rooftop. And I was like, okay. So I, I fucking pried the hatch open and I, I essentially broke into this, this building 
And then I just, I mean, I just, I'm not trying to, I just want to get down to the ground level, right? I'm over this and I want to go home, you know? <laughs> so I yeah, break into the building and then I get down to the, from the third floor to the ground floor. And it, this is, there's like a showroom floor in there. I don't want to say what kind of business it was, but the showroom floor. And as I walk across the showroom floor to get to a roll down, which is on the other side of the fucking showroom floor, this boom, 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 all these lights kick on, these motion lights in the fucking showroom, right? And then I heard beep, 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 beep. And I'm like, fucking, the, the alarm's going off. I'm fucking at this roll down door, which has a, a pile of car tires in front of it. And I'm fucking taking the car tires. I'm fucking just dishing car tires. Boom, boom. Throwing them across the car on the showroom floor. They're hitting cars and boom, boom, boom. And then I'm fucking throwing tire, 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 tire. Get to the fucking thing to get. I'm like, I'm trying to pull it down, but the gears like stuck, right? Probably my way out, I go, boom. And I strip the gears like, Zzz. I was like, fuck, this fucking's not gonna work. So I know that gate's, that, that roll down door is not gonna open. I find another roll down door and I see it's got a padlock on the bottom right. And it's padlocked at the bottom. And the fucking alarm's been going off for like 15 minutes now. I feel like a fucking rat, like this place is filling up with water. I'm just trying to get air. And um, I'm fucking pulling on that chain, boom, 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 boom. And the fucking padlocked on the right, but the left side's like, dee, 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 like probably eight, maybe 10 inches like that. And I slide on out and I get out of there. And I fucking, I'm, I, I think I'm coming out. I think I'm ready. I think there's just gonna be a fucking wall of police, right? Like I was thinking, it's always worst, worst case scenario. But I get out and I fucking, I go across the freeway, like just uh, to this like field right there, and I fucking just took a shit. It fucking it just all, all that fucking hype. I just had to take a shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was wearing like a onesie, like a like a. Like a onesie the fuck? thermal thing because I knew it was going to be cold at night. So not what only did I take you, a shit. What the fuck did you wipe with? Uh, I wiped with his pocket. I think I probably sacrificed a sock or something. Uh, I think it was a sock. Yeah, I think I lost that. That sacrificed my sock. But yeah, dude, I had a onesie on underneath. So I had to take off all my fucking clothes. I'm, I'm butt naked, taking a shit in the rain. And the sun's coming up and people can see me as they're getting off the off ramp. I'm just... And the alarm's still going off next door, like probably like a hundred yards away. The fucking alarm's going off over there. I don't even know if the cops have been going off, but butt naked taking a shit at sunrise right there on the side of the ten. Nothing like it. Oh man, that's <laughs> <it>. that's living. <laughs> that is living right there, man. <laughs> butt naked taking a shit in the rain in the field. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just glad I got out of that building, man. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. Then I went to Del Taco, got breakfast, and took an Uber home. What about heroes? You ever you ever encountered any heroes? Heroes, oh goodness! I mean, yeah, like dudes trying to chase you. Oh yeah, you. oh Karens, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what you call it. Well, the female ones, like yeah, this is like, you know, it's, okay. So I was painting this thing one time on like uh, this like boulevard, which had all these bars, right? And these these girls are getting out of the bar. I was changing a fucking uh, some movie poster to, to my name, whatever. And then like, well, why are you doing this? And I said, well, you know, okay, well, and I actually sat there and I was like, I was being polite and then I, but I, I'm, you know, I was telling her how I felt and, was, you know, why do you care kind of thing? And I'm asking her questions like, what, like, are you going to be upset? You know, there was some major movie that was advertising all around. Like, are you, are you personally upset that like, I'm changing this one movie advertisement of which there are thousands of this movie advertisements in the city. Like, why does that upset you? And, and it, it's because... Oh, they were upset, or they were just asking why were you doing it? Well, she, well, well, okay, so there was a group of drunk people, and they were they were hammered, and um, uh, one girl was upset about it. She she didn't think I should be doing this, that this was wrong, and that and I and I said that's fine, and, you know that's her opinion, I, I, but why? Why? You know, I'm trying to just have a, a conversation about it, right? And um, yeah, uh, she, you know, at the end of the day, she just it came down to this that she felt that it was wrong that I was doing that because graffiti is wrong. And, and, and uh, you know, to get into the specifics, like she couldn't really articulate it better than that. Maybe because she was drunk or, or maybe because she doesn't understand even why she thinks that is wrong, but she's just been made to think that way. So that's the way she thinks. And I think that there is a bit of a brainwashing of society by, I don't know, maybe corporations or, 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 or the government itself or law enforcement and people to make these laws that, Graffiti is bad, don't do graffiti, right? But it's like, okay, let's look in deeper than that. 
Why is the graffiti bad? It's bad that I go splash color around town. This is a fucking cement gray wall that was pretty fucking boring earlier on. You didn't look at it twice and now I'm putting fucking paint on it that's colorful and now you're mad about it? Like, you didn't care about this wall at all before. And it's, um, yeah, and when I got down to it with that with that girl, like, um, she couldn't really articulate to her, to me why it, why it bothered her so much, which makes me just think that she just bothered because she's told that this is bothersome to society, that this is ghetto. It's, this, this is ghetto, what you're doing here, and it's, it's, I don't like it, you know? And it's like, well, why can't you articulate why you don't like it? If you don't like it, you could tell me what about it you don't like, but if you can't tell me that, it makes me think that you don't like this because you're told not to like it. And I think there's a lot of that going on in society, especially today where people are against things because they are told that these are bad to society and that this is just, you know, and it's like, okay, but does it affect you personally? And if it does, how? And no one's been able to articulate that to me because I don't think anyone really cares. Well, well, their argument is always, how would you feel if someone came and did that to you all? That somebody so has and somebody, and and that's it doesn't bother me that much. I just make something dope. Please don't be toy. Because <laughs> <laughs> cause that would bother me. No, no. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. It, it, you know, people have graffitied on my, uh, you know, apartment before, on property of mine before. Um, I guess uh, I, from an artist standpoint, I, I just wanted to be, make it, make it, cooler than it looked already and and a uh, plain gray cement wall is hard to not make cooler than it already looks so yeah i mean what's wrong with splashing color in the world i think that color is one of the most beautiful things visually that we have yeah but then they say go do it on a paper at campus well, don't man, do it on you got to bring it to the people otherwise i mean who's going around looking asking people for let me see your paper graffiti canvases you know <laughs> like yeah, uh, if it weren't for me bringing, you know, I, the cool thing about graffiti is like, I'm going to put this where it's like, you can't ignore and That's what I love doing. Like, I'm going to do, but I'm going to put this where you can't ignore it, where, you know, 300,000 people are going to pass this a day and it's going to be so colorful and bold and beautiful, in my opinion that people can't ignore it. And uh, and that's what's great about graffiti. It's not like you don't have to go to an art museum to come look at it. Like, I'll, I'll know, I'll bring it to you. You're sitting in traffic anyways. Look at my shit. And like it or not, I don't care, but you're gonna look at it. You're pretty blessed to, uh, that's the worst like hero you've had. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. some people have had heroes that have oh. tried to shoot at them, yeah, no. run them down in the car. Like, there's some, there's some crazy uh, incidents where people have encountered like straight psychopaths. I think it was, well, I think it, well, I mean, I've run into gangsters, but that's, I'm, I'm going to call that a hero. They, they, yeah, they don't want me writing in that neighborhood. Um, I actually had a biker one time. I got like, like, a, like a, I don't know if he was a hell's angel or what, but he's a leather Oh, gang. from a biker gang. Yeah, biker gang type dude on a Harley who uh, I was hiding out in the bushes. And he was like circling for like 40 minutes, circling this fucking, it was a, a house which was gonna get demolished anyways. But I had, I grilled the front of the house, right? And uh, luckily he had, he passed me, he saw me doing it and then he came back around. And just lucky for me, I had gone into the bush because uh, to get a different color paint to do something else. And um, he came back and I saw, he's like looking for me, looking for me, looking for me. He does, and I'm like, and I'm watching him looking for me through the bushes, you know? And, uh, and yeah, it had to be 40 minutes. I sat in that bush and this guy's like, he's like in front of the house, he goes around to the alley in the back and he's doing a circle. I could, because the bike was so loud, I could hear exactly where he was going. And he was, yeah, he wanted, he was, I don't think he was looking for an autograph. Um, he could have been there to just have offer, you, offer you a place in the motorcycle van. Yeah, I could location, you never know. I would have been like a Mongol or something, you know? <laughs> it could have changed my life. No. No, I, who knows? But I, you could have probably, you probably felt the energy and maybe you were able to see his face that it was not good energy. <laughs> no, no, no. He was, yeah. he wanted to bring you there. Yeah, he wanted, yeah, yeah. He wanted to mm -hmm. do something, yeah. He at least wanted to give me an earful at the very least about how he felt maybe, maybe he didn't like my art I was making. Maybe he didn't like those colors. Maybe that was his house. I don't yeah, know. you don't know if he was strapped. I think you played it right because you never know. Oh yeah, I'm not trying to like talk it out like 21 questions with some fucking motorcycle gang guy about why I'm painting the front of his house. Like, <laughs> I just, any question at all, like that's like the thing too. Like it, in those situations, 
it's just awkward for me. So it's like, you know, I, I just, I try to do my best. And that's why I like painting alone. You know, most of the times I just paint alone is because the less, you know, groups of people like together, like going into like, you know, you know, breaking locks or finding entrances or hopping fences, like that's very threatening. Like one rogue guy is just like, you know, strolling around a fucking abandoned building. I, just, I think that's a lot less threatening. I think a lot less people call the cops. I think when they see groups of people, it's more alarming to some people, but uh, I know a lot of people feel safe in numbers, you know? But for me, I just like paint alone. I just like lurking in the shadows. I like going there, I like doing my art. Boom, don't see nobody, don't talk to nobody, no problems. In, out, everyone wakes up to it the next day. That's my ideal mission, you know? And in doing this, how, how important is it to have discipline to say, you know, this doesn't feel right, I'm gonna walk mm -hmm. away from this one. Or I'm getting too greedy tonight, I've already hit five spots, three spots, good spot. Uh, you know, it's getting a little late. Mm, I'm pressing it, you know what I mean? Because with sunlight coming up, comes more people, people are going to work. Yeah, I think in the broke. beginning when I started doing it, I wasn't persistent enough. Whereas like any little fucking like, like, you know, noise or whatever, like I was quick to fucking like, like abort the mission very quick, you know? And I've kind of learned that, you know, most time, even like, okay, like, uh, like a, a, you know, I, I, a car will pull over, uh, you know, or I, I've even had a, I, 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 one time I got up on this billboard, right when I got up on the billboard, walked across the catwalk, a cop pulled up and he parked right under the billboard right there. And I was like, fuck, I'm done. You know, like they, they got me or whatever, you know, but, but you know, I just, I just hit out, lay down, whatever on the roof. And, you know, 10 minutes later, just drove off and I finished it. So I find most, the thing that will spook us the most is in our head, right? That we believe that, you know, everyone's out to get us. They're on to me and they're, they're all going to come in from all sides. And it's, uh, yeah. So, but I do still follow, like, I uh, have like a gut feeling where it's almost like, okay, I've been here too long. It's been like, you know, you know, or like you did certain spots, you know, just, yeah, you got to follow. I think having a good gut instinct, Follow your gut, believe your into you know, trust in your intuitions. Um, but also don't flee the scene at like the first, like, you know, whatever, you know, person like looking at you or saying something or honking or whatever. Cause um, more often than not, you know, as long as you're not being fucking like blatant or like, you know, you're, I don't know, you know, just, it's hard to say, you know, because there's so many times where I probably pulled the plug or aborted a mission where I, where I didn't need to. And there's, you know, it's hard to say when you don't know what the flip side of the coin would be. But um, I, luckily, uh, Neil, I haven't been, you know, caught up too much. But uh, I, and I tend to take a while to do some of these things, you know. Some of these things take time, hours sometimes. I'm on billboards for many hours, you know. Uh, but I also try to be careful which billboards I take, you know, and I, I have precautions, you know, things that I do that like, you know, turn off the lights and these types of things. Uh, as far as, cause I don't see too many labels or sticker shit for me. You stay away from it or do you see? Well, my homie Atmos, he made some stickers, uh, Atmos brain stickers that he gave me like a thousand of them. I remember giving them to me, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with all these fucking stickers? Like, I, I could have like tried to give them to like my nephews and stuff like, you guys want some stickers? <laughs> And, uh, I mean, I don't know, like <laughs> for some people that's like, I, I know some people that's like their whole fucking, their whole MO is just like, I'm not fucking sticker guy. I put stickers <laughs> where like, I think that's cool for them. But like, for me, I don't, you know, it doesn't give me like the same rush, I guess. I mean, I feel like for me, it's like, like, like the painting, the actual, the act of the painting, the spraying the paint on the wall, making lines and doing this and mm. that's where that's where I get my kicks. So, I mean, if you want to fucking put stickers everywhere, like, cool, but I don't. I, no, you do. Nah. Maybe one day I'll come out with a brain sticker. I'll give you one.
but yeah, I can't beat really this one over Atmos, and that's where Atmos, Atmos told me about this spot. And actually, when we came, they came. Oh, wait, this dude, Atmos? Yeah, Atmos. I don't know what they told me to as an AI. I'm going to fix that for him, but. Uh, oh, look at the cross out thing about the Brainiac tag. That just kind of comes up. Anyway, so I painted with these guys, but I didn't even paint that night. I didn't even do nothing, but but we all had the colors and stuff I was going to paint. But I was like helping out. I almost like just helping do like the outline and shit. But then um, I wanted to be next to them because we all came together, or whatever. So that I came like the next night and I did mine. And I took my time with my shit. Um, but when I was doing this, actually, the cops did roll by. There used to be a house right here. It's not here no more. And um, yeah, because when we painted this spot, the house was still here. We were the first ones to paint this spot. Um, the cops rolled by. And I don't know if they saw me or not, but like you, you know, like you said earlier, like you see cops, you like freak out, like they're coming to get me. There's a camera right there. And uh, I, I went over here. I hid in the dumpster for like fucking thirty minutes. So I thought the cops were coming. Over. I don't think they ever really did. But I was just paranoid. So this was it. So you guys, you guys obviously chose these colors to stick with, right? For this. Yeah, yeah. We all like them and got. Yeah. Pop paint three matching matching twinsies, you know? Yeah. That's dope though, ghost. You know what I mean? So how long how how long would you say estimate this to? Took me? Yeah. Was I was like uh, I was you know when I first started painting like No, this one. I, how would you say? I, I thought it took me an hour, I'd say. Maybe uh -huh. maybe even longer. I don't know. I was really slow. For a while I was really uh -huh. like, I just recently got fast. Like I'm not fast even. I'm just faster than I was because I was so slow in the beginning. I'd be fucking touching my shit up and touching it up and fucking it up. I, you know, in the beginning, I say I was like 20% of the time I was making progress and 80% of the time I was either fucking something up or fixing a fuck up, you know? And yep. Yeah, but being too picky, can't that either fucking... It's not good. Yeah, it, it could catch you a case, right? Hell yeah. So... Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if I should share this, but I have this strategy, which is... And friends of mine have given me a hard time about this, which is... I would come to spots and I, I would paint it and I, I would like, and then I would come back and I would come back and I come back and like the response I keep, I would, I'd come back seven, eight times. But I feel like I, my strategy was this. I want to be there for a short amount of time. And even if I don't finish it, I'll come back and I'll finish it at some point. And um, I felt like it was like less risk. And that was like kind of my strategy at the time. It was like paint for an hour and then leave and then come back and then just do it in little spurts. And then like IROC used to give me the hardest times. Like, dude, you go to a spot brain and you fucking paint that spot and you walk away and you're fucking done and that's what it looks like and that's what it stays it those buffed or fucking gone over or whatever but that's that's how you paint and i was like no no but I, you know i didn't even paint some stuff and i feel like i was done i drive by the next day but i can i got put some highlights on there i would always come back to shit and keep fixing it fixing it fixing it until i felt like i had it right but like um that's, that's something i've got that's insane than. it's insane yeah. <laughs> what the well, i have no life you know like this is my like graffiti is my life this is all Really? I don't... I have nothing else in life. I, that, that's fucking sad, I know. But it's true. That's fucking sad. Sure. Teach his own. Everyone has their own thing. I don't... I've given up everything for this. It had... Fuck. That's dumb as fuck. But... Getting better, though. <laughs> At least. <laughs> I do love it. People seem to love it. Well, not everyone. Nobody hates my graffiti as much as other graffiti writers. Nah, I don't think. I, I think cons like they, conservatives hate it more. <laughs> I feel yeah. like the general public has. I feel like the general public has been more accepting of my graffiti than than people that are previously already in the graffiti culture. It's really hard to like get respect from people. It's how it works. It seems. I've come to notice that if anyone's right, done graffiti before you've done graffiti, then you're like a loser to them. You like, are, are lame. And if you've done graffiti longer than someone else has just picked it up, they're always gonna be lame to you. So if someone's done graffiti longer than you, they're gonna think you're lame. And so that's what it seems like, at least. And they, they, you have to, and then you have to play by these rules, these, you know, you know, throw ups over tags, and pieces over throw ups, and so on and so forth, whatever. But like, those rules only apply, it seems, to people who have gotten into the game later than you. But if you've been in the game longer than them, no matter what it is, you can do whatever you want on them and you're supposed to be respected because you've been in the game longer than them or they've been doing this longer than you and they're a fucking legend in their own minds. We're all legends in our own minds, but fuck. It's like, I don't know. I really try my hardest not to go over people. My hardest. Um, 
I try, it's, it's really fucking hard to stay neutral in this game to have no beef with nobody. I've gone out of my way and I've swallowed my pride more times than I can count about people going over my shit and not even getting my spots back. Cause I try to hit people up like, yo, why'd you go over my shit? And it's kind of like, fuck you brain, don't go over mine. And I've been respectful a lot of times. I mean, I look at it this way, it's like, I got a fucking lot of spots, so I can lose one here now and then. But there's a lot of people, especially it seems like these older cats, be like, don't have that many spots. So once they go over you and they cap you, they want to hold on to that spot because they ain't that active. But I try to be respectful of that. And I've swallowed a lot of my pride just to try to stay neutral in the game and try to fucking keep the beef to a minimum. And even then, I got beef. this uh i don't know the percentage of older writers mm -hmm. that still catch a spot here and there but will you ever stop because i've uh, i know someone that says uh they'll never stop like never they stopped. think even in their old age they'll still like do a Walker little something down the street, like, yeah they'll just still do a little something on the side whether mm -hmm. it be somewhere in the bathroom or, do you think at a certain age, you ever stop? I don't know. You know, I don't. I yeah, I can. That's an honest answer. Yeah, you know, I really don't know. Yeah, um, that's like people ask me all the time, like, will you ever drink alcohol again? Like, I hope not. You know, because I just know how I am or how it makes me feel, and I, and I don't like that feeling. But on the flip side, I know how painting makes me feel, and then, and then that's the uh, you know makes me feel good, and, I, and so I hope not that I would ever quit doing something that I enjoy so much, but I don't know, maybe one day I'll have kids and start a family and show them how to do graffiti and they can just run my name for me. <laughs> <laughs> Go out, right brain on everything. Uh, that's, a, that's a segue. Uh, so would you be okay with your kids doing graffiti? Oh, uh, you <laughs> know, I would honestly, I would, I would, I would, if it, if it, if it, if it meant, like, I would deter them from doing it. Like, you know, like I would, I'm definitely not putting a, probably a spray paint can in their hand and saying, Hey, you know, but again, you know, uh, I would deter them, but I would also want them to find passion in their life. Find something. And if they were passionate about it, like I am, then I would, I, I couldn't take that from them, you know? So if they felt as strongly as I feel about it, I would say, this is what you love. If it makes you happy, then then fucking paint everything you fucking want. Um, but I would try to deter them by just, you know, here's a coloring book, stay in the lines. You no, know, I would, you know, there's other ways to be creative and creative outlets. And, you know, I, I've heard somebody once say, uh, I believe it was uh, Two Tone on his podcast uh, talking about how kind of, becoming like finding talent or being good at graffiti is almost a curse because when you're good at something, you're more compelled to do it and being more compelled to do something that's illegal. Like graffiti is almost, um, unlucky in a sense that, um, it would lead you into like places that were not as positive in your life or something. A lot of artists move into the, the gallery space of stuff. Yeah. Would you would you ever have a show? Yeah. Uh, canvases where you'd be in the gallery. Yeah, you know, actually, um, I had uh, once upon a time dreamt of doing um, just a show of like all all my brandles and things, and I I tried to I, I, I don't do it anymore because uh, I lost my apartment, so I've I've lost my collection of things because I had to greatly downsized. But um, I was. At one point, I would do a, a, a poster where I would, you know, like the, the, the brandalism type stuff where I'm changing the movie name or whatever the advertisement for it into my name. And I, was, I would do two. I would do one that I would keep and I would do one that I would uh, put back out uh, on the street somewhere, right? And um, the idea was I, once I had a pretty good collection of the, the duplicate ones I did, I would have like an art show of like all these like movie advertisements for, for things that were altered by me into you know, brain and uh, 
Yeah, hopefully one day I can do that. That'd be cool. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, and like, and, and there's like more, you know, media elements I want to add to it where it's like, uh, you know, like play like these like commercials and, uh, you know, like, which would be like very satirical and, uh, you know, just kind of making fun of like the corporate side of things. Um, because being on that side of it, now being on like the, the, the very alt side of it, which is like anti-establishment uh, and, and, and kind of then using their techniques uh, to make poke fun at them, you know, and how hip hypocritical they can be and stuff, and, you know, pointing out their flaws. Yeah, most people don't know how much psychology goes into what they're doing. You know, when, when they put out advertisements, whether it be billboards, commercials, we're all brainwashed and it's very, yeah, we're all extremely, and then, and then the perfect example is the heroes you were talking about earlier. Like I see someone doing graffiti, that's bad. I'm calling the police. And if you sit down with that person and have a conversation about it, like, well, why is this bad? Why does this bother you? And they're not able to explain to, or articulate that to you. It makes me believe that they're bothered because they're told that they should be bothered. And that's not, that's bothersome in itself that but do you really fucking care? It doesn't sound like you do because you'd be able to explain to me why. And telling me something is wrong because it's wrong is not the reason why. Yeah, I, I look at it the same way when you're talking about, you know, it's like, all right, I might be driving one day, right? And I see a billboard. It might not be something that I truly want to look at or I, I find pleasant to the eyes, right? Mm. So what gives them the right? because they had the money to put it up, right? But it, I mean, everyone didn't agree on that to go up necessarily, but I do see that, but I don't see how the average, see me and you see through that, but like, I don't see how the average citizen, you know, it's almost like they're under this they are. entrancement, you know what I mean? Absolutely they are. They're, they're almost brainwashed into thinking, there's, because there's really no difference, you know what I mean? There isn't but it's yet. just someone has the bankroll to do this yeah. and someone else doesn't. And if they have the bankroll to pay for the advertisement, mm -hmm. you know, then I would say they also have the bankroll to replace the advertisement if it does get vandalized. And to try to come into to, to LA or Venice Beach or whatever, which has, you know, Venice Beach is a community built for artists. And now you have artists expressing themselves on what might be a corporate advertisement. And now you're, you're putting your, the, the, you're putting the, your advertisement in the artist community. The artist is, you know, this is what we do. We make art. So I think that they have to understand that if you're going to put a canvas out here for us, which is your advertisement for fucking whatever, and we write on it, like, this is an artist. This is a community built by and for artists. And now we're being creative and artistic on your, on your, it's not, it's not me. I'm not in the wrong. I'm in the right place. This is me. This is my people. This is what we do. You're in the wrong. It's you who's out of place. And you're getting mad for me being artic, being artistic in an art, artist community. That just, that just seems backwards to me. Like, I get it. You pay money for that. So get money and pay for another one or keep them coming and I'll keep painting on them or whatever. But I think that especially in Venice, there is more right to have art on the walls than there are corporate advertisements or advertisements for whatever the fuck it is. Kardashians, or, I mean, I remember they put these Kardashian posters up one time and the, the guy just stopped putting them up because they just could not get vandalized. Every day they get vandalized, <laughs> mostly by me. Like just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You touched on a little bit something earlier as far as the evolution. You think there's gonna be like hacking of like, you know, electronic systems and stuff. If I have anything to say about it, yeah. I feel like any artist is always trying to like, just try to what, take whatever you're doing and try to like, you, you want to find the next level or like find something that like is unique to you. Or, you know, I think for me personally, I just, you know, yeah, I'm always trying to think of like, what's what's new, what's, cre you know, being a creative person, you're always trying to create something, try to create something original, do something new. and. I've never seen anybody, I mean, sure, the people hack the fucking, you know, the, those uh, mobile, like, uh, you know, Caltrain song, yeah. yeah. And I've done that, that was cool. Uh, but to hack a large LED digital billboard, 
that just says like, you know, you could put a video in there. Like I'll just put a video of me masturbating in there. Like, Brainiac, you know, or whatever. Like I, you know, not necessarily that, but like I just to I don't know. Maybe I'll just put it like you play a video of me just sitting here on a couch or whatever. It'd be a live feed of me just hanging out of a home, you know, walking around naked, cooking fucking scrambled eggs. <laughs> I just think that shit. I did intense. That would be a t yeah, yeah. You yeah. should see me cook scrambled eggs. <laughs> I think I just I, I I think it's funny to do funny stuff to, to like because. I don't know. To make somebody laugh is pretty funny. Uh, I think that's it's a it's amusing. I mean, I, I don't know. I like making people laugh, I guess. But also, maybe make them think. Maybe make them feel anything. I think would be pretty like powerful. Like uh, I remember one time I fucking I was I there was this like like blonde trendy like sorority girl like standing at the end of the block and I I went up in front of her and there was a mattress by the dumpster and I I wrote bum cum on it on the mattress. And I turned around and I looked at her because I wanted to see, you know, what her expression was that I wrote this. And she's like that most sour looking, like, so sour looking face. Like she was just like, Ew, like, like so disgusted that I wrote bum cum on this mattress that, um, yeah, just to make somebody like to, to influence her emotions, like to total disgust and so easily felt powerful. And, uh, yeah, I, I like that, you know? I remember one time I fucking spray painted on another mattress, uh, free mattress, but I cummed it up super hard. And these two dudes were walking and they saw me ride it on there and they were fucking laughing all the way down the block. And, and I got a kick out of that too. Like, that, like they thought that was so fun. I mean, I thought it was funny too, but uh, yeah, I like just people feeling like bum cum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do you think with the, the immersion of technology and cameras everywhere, it'll ever be impossible Ooh, to do graffiti? Not impossible. Do you ever think it'll come to that point? Well, I climbed up on a billboard last night and it was, here's your billboard. And it had a, like a 10 foot metal pole that went straight out. And it just had a camera like looking back at the billboard. That's like, I can only assume specifically to videotape vandals uh, vandalizing their billboard, right? Um, but, you know, I've already came up with the plan to just fucking bag that son of a bitch with a fucking telescoping paint pole. And then, I mean, it, it's easy. I mean, we have spray paint. You just, right, you, you know, there you go. Problem solved, right? So, you know, that's for every problem, there is a solution. And, we'll, you know, and even if you videotape people, wait, we could wear a mask, you know, uh, that doesn't mean, I mean, you'd have to be pretty foolish to go paint a billboard with a camera pointing at it, with the lights on, with no mask, waving to the camera, stating your name and social security number. Like, but you know, I think there's ways around things like that. You think it'll always exist no matter how far technology and abundant becomes. Yes, there will always be, because I feel like it would be disappointing if there wasn't because I feel like everyone should have, a, everyone needs a voice. Everyone needs to be heard, right? Or has this, you know, this notion, or at least I feel that way, I should say. I want to be heard. Um, and what am I saying? I guess I'm just screaming my name out loud. But the point is that as humans, I think there will always be people that feel that way and they'll always want to express themselves and, and where they express themselves is where wherever they feel they need to or want to and i don't think he can stop that i think and i don't think he should try to stop that you know why what is it so bad we're we're i mean we're expressing ourselves we're writing our names we're being artistic we're, i mean i i really don't see the crime in that and i i, I really you know i do have it like we talked about like some morality to this i'm you know i'm not trying to fuck up somebody's front glass window but i do feel like I mean, if I apply paint to something and you can just easily, just as easily paint over it, why am I going to jail? Like, well, they're saying there's costs attributed with that and work being attributed to that. Well, if you're any good at business, you turn in a pretty good profit so you can cover the cost. Yeah, but it's eating into their profit. That's what they say. I guarantee you they're not missing any meals. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Hey, I always have to give the other. No, no, I, mean, I think it's good I'll, that you play the devil's advocate. I'll, I always have to because that's, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. I, I like to look at it from every point of view, you know what I mean? That's what I respect about you. And I think it's good that somebody does ask those questions. I think it's good to see both sides of the coin. And I, these are valid points that you have. And I, I sometimes, I, some things I have sympathy for and some things I guess I, I, I don't. But I don't think I'm an asshole for not caring about their, you know, I mean, what does it cost? To, like to, to paint a wall, what does it cost? I mean, you're looking at like 15 bucks for the paint and you got to pay a guy what $15 an hour is going to take him what? I don't know, worst case scenario, the guy's slow and it takes up four hours. You're looking at less than a hundred bucks. And that's like, again, if you're any good at business, uh, that shouldn't be too much to you, but. Yeah, but then they go, you have no right to have done that, you know? Well, it's if you catch me, then I'll pay the restitution. Like, well, I haven't paid it, but they told me I gotta pay it. <laughs> yeah. So if you catch me, you, the, 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 the restitution is jacked up. Like, I don't know how many thousands of percent, but like, it should be enough to cover up uh, graffiti for the next 10 years I'd say have you ever had an experience with either someone that was like oh that's you or let's say a fan or a groupie and you're just so surprised at what they either they said to you or maybe they even offered to do to you or maybe it was a female maybe almost like a rock star you yeah. know might have had a groupie story most of my groupie stories I can't share but uh, it happens a lot more often than ever, ever. I mean, yeah. Really? I mean, just the other night, I was, uh, was it two nights ago? This guy looked like a fucking, like, computer programmer from, like, India or something. And he's like, you're a brainiac? Oh, my God. He's like, you've been crushing it lately. I just saw the new billboard you did over here. And I saw this one and that one. And, man, you just keep going. And it's just, like, the most, uns this guy was, like, 50-something years old and, like, a professional of some sort, or he looked professional at least, but that's what you know. <laughs> uh, you know, he didn't look like a fucking, you know, degenerate, you know, which is, you know, I think a lot of people look at, you know, I remember one time somebody told me, oh, you do graffiti? I thought graffiti was just homeless tweakers. And I was like, ouch. Uh, well, I mean, I'm sure there are homeless tweakers who do graffiti, sure, but like, no, like, you know, a lot of people are here are like, Hold down jobs. We contribute to society. I have, you know, I have a, uh, what is it called? I just wish I had it here. A certificate from the city of Los Angeles that said, we appreciate, whether it's the city of Los Angeles, hereby appreciates Brainiac Art for his contribution in donating his time and art skills to some skateboard contest that was held in Venice. Uh, I painted some, like, banner thing for them, and it's got the city seal on it and stuff, like, I'm a pillar of my community. I'm a great neighbor, a great friend. I help people out. I also vandalize billboards, whatever. You know, it's funny. I have this like old lady in my complex. She's like, gotta be 85, 90 years old, you know? And she's like, uh, you know, she's all, uh, whenever she sees it, uh, you know, bringing it out in the world, she's always, I saw your thing on the whatever freeway. And that one's nice. I like the colors you picked. And then uh, what'd she say one time? Uh, uh, she had thought I had, she thought I had written on the ch on the side of the church and I had to tell her like you know you know I've been I've been writing on the side of St Mark's church and she's like I thought I saw him down and I'd go down there and take a picture and set, set her straight she she was she was vision she was upset that she thought I'd written on the church yeah so that's another one of your rules you won't do a church oh, I'm not trying to go to hell man <laughs> yeah 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 I just so you're a religious man. I do. I have faith in God. Yes, very much. So. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're not right on the church. That's, you know, I'm just trying to stay out of hell the best I can. But, you know, I think the least amount of precaution. It's like everyone, you know, you just do quite just enough work to not get fired. I'm doing just enough right to not go to hell, you know. No, I feel like I, I feel like I personally feel I have a pretty good moral compass. I feel like I am a good person that does graffiti does that make me a bad person i'm sure some people would say yes i think people that know me would say i'm not a bad person so you think hell is real it's a real place you go after eternal damnation uh well, i don't want to find out not the hard way you know i'd be like i think that's just not a gamble worth taking you know interesting uh, yeah but i mean what i mean eternal damnation that's a high price tag to pay you know Oof. 
Yeah, but what if there isn't? Then I think God there isn't, you know? Then I think that. And what if we didn't even have the right rules here and we didn't know? I don't think we do have the right rules here, but... Um, we didn't even know the playbook on not to go in. I think the playbook <laughs> has gotten skewed by people who have greedy intentions, probably, you know? Um, yeah, I don't think we do have the right playbook. I think we've been duped. Uh, Interesting. I'm not saying God probably says to go right on walls, but I don't mm -hmm. think that, you know... Back in Roman times, when people were in caves, like, you know, putting things on the walls, these ancient Egyptians, hieroglyphics on the caves, uh, were that seemed as immoral and against the law? Were they taking a jail? I don't think really anyone gave a fuck. Why do they give a fuck now? Because people, I don't know, politicians are saying that uh, this is a, a scab, a, you know, a scar on society, that this is ghetto, and this is um, making our, you know, upscale white neighborhoods look trashy it's always like the money standpoint it's interesting i was uh this morning i was watching youtube and rick caruso one of the dudes that ran for um she mayor of okay. los angeles yeah you know he was campaigning on a heavy uh swift hand on crime and yeah. all this other stuff but it was very interesting he's, he's talking about the towers that got mm. graffiti and he was like this has to stop. I don't think the guy knows the difference between like some of the murals and like the graffiti. illegal graffiti. Sure. And he's just, you go down any street and you see this stuff and that's why visit. No, dude. Like he, he, he's not addressing the real problem, which is actually inflation and jobs. You know what I mean? Sure. They, they butchered through the COVID bullshit. You know what I mean? They fucked over all the businesses. These people will find any way to flip it. Yeah in any favor they want. So he's trying to say that the retail shopping is dead because of the graffiti in downtown so people don't want to go out and see that. And, and development. Blaming, yeah, you know, you know, it's got nothing to do with Amazon. It's got nothing to do with like COVID and people doing all the shopping online. It's got nothing to do with any of the real things that took away the retail shopping all day. I mean, you look at Third Street Promenade right now, they have 40% occupancy. More than half of the Third Street Promenade shops are empty. It used to be three blocks long. It's two, one and a half, two blocks long now. And most of the stores are closed. And there's no fucking graffiti around there. This is the problem is when you, when we all now shop from Amazon, buy everything from Amazon because it's so cheap and it comes right to our door. The thing we haven't thought about is all these grocery stores, you know, I'm not even talking about the big chains, but like the mom and pop ones, those are, out of, those are already, already out of business, right? And then you got the Rouse and the, you know, like all these grocery stores are going out of business. So what happens to a small town in the middle of America when the people who own the supermarket, they're, at, they're, they're unemployed. Okay. Now you got the employees of the supermarket, they're unemployed, the shoe stores, every store in town has now been replaced by Amazon. Right? So Jeff Bezos is making like a cabillion you know, gazillion dollars, but we just put a whole town out of business and unemployed. And we wonder why they're on drugs. Well, what do you, what you expect them to do now that they're unemployed? To just take a vacation to Hawaii? They, they don't have money. So they're looking, I mean, suicide rates are, are up a lot. People are unhappy. It's, you know, and, and with the AI now on top of this, it's like we've just compounded a, a, a homeless epidemic that's been in the making for like 100 years. So, I mean, we got nearly 100,000 people homeless in downtown LA and they're throwing billions of dollars at it. I don't know where the fucking money's going. I mean, they will short term house these homeless people. Uh, that industry is a racket. And oh, so it's just a big racket. It's just a non-profit. We have this safety team, uh, the circle team. We're paying these people to like, I don't know, help the homeless or clean up the streets. And it's like, we're funneling millions of dollars into like, something that's not a solution at all it's just embezzled money it's just it's, it's a fucking hotbed for corruption and fucking just people skimming the money i mean 3.8 million dollars are saying to paint uh, to get rid of the, the, the graffiti on those towers right well first we could argue is that even a problem to have graffiti on the towers okay let's say best case it is a problem it does need to be cleaned up 3.8 million i'll tell you what i'll get together me and the whole crew We'll work for a month. We'll clean all the graffiti off the building. Give me a million and we're good. So 
that money's being skimmed. I mean, it's it's there's corruption. I used to think of corruption. You think like Russia or Eastern Europe, these like countries where like the KGB is like in control or you know, it, corruption is so alive and so well. Like in you know our our federal government, but even in the, these small local governments, it's somebody is fucking stealing a lot of fucking money, especially from these homeless programs. And I don't think giving out fucking free crack pipes and pookies and fucking needles is the answer either. But, you know, uh, I think, you know, there's a housing crisis. And rent since COVID has now even, um, well, in my personal complex gone up 50%. So, it's, I don't know who can afford this shit. Yeah, it's not going, it's, it's not going up in correlation with the, with the wages. So, it's, no, not it's pretty... It, it's it's gonna get interesting these next coming years, but but I think that's what they they're doing on purpose. Yes, they are doing it because of what they're trying to, to to separate these classes by by an extreme amount to either you either the have or you the have not. But where I live in Venice, it's like the haves and the have nots like are separated by a matter of feet. You know, like I remember there's a guy that was like I'm in my bed and here's my wall and there's a guy like. We were pretty much bunk mates, but I was on the inside of the walls and he was on the outside of the walls. But, you know, what separated us was one wall and about like, you know, $3,000 a month in rent, you know? That's deep right there. Yeah. That's deep. I Seriously, the guy That's slept deep. on the other, like he slept within a foot of me. But the grass is always greener. I'm sure that guy's wishing he was on the inside and, and, and being able to, you know, and, and sometimes I'm thinking, shit, I could save $3,000 and I'd be sleeping like 12 inches to the side, you know, maybe a little bit colder out there, but three grand a month you know that's a lot of money it's you know so back to the graph side so what's behind the the vip because a lot of people you know that i've come in contact they're like what is that what what, what does that mean what's the main that? meaning is uh it was vandalism and progress it all started with my own mm-hmm. name iraq he um was working at a t-shirt screen printing shop on the boardwalk and he made himself this jumpsuit that he made himself two jumpsuits one jumpsuit said on the back of the sweatshirt said, please don't call the cops. And I thought that was hilarious. And then he made a second jumpsuit that said, uh, vandalism of progress on it. And we'd go out painting and he'd be wearing, he'd be doing graffiti and wearing the sweatshirt on the back of the sweatshirt said, please don't call the cops. Uh, but then he was start wearing the vandalism of progress one. And, uh, we just came up with the VIP from that. And, uh, it's, it started as a joke. And then, uh, people, uh, like, the, the type, type, Rekka got in and type, yeah, I remember Rekka who, who's fucking like all city killer. He, he, that guy's everywhere. I mean, even driving up to Oakland, the guy was all the way up the five freeway the whole way. Like, I don't think he, he's up everywhere. But the point is, yeah, Rekka, well, he's like, when well, you guys gonna put me in the crew? And, I, you know, I just started laughing at first and then we put him in and then type in and then, uh, arrow and yeah something that started as a joke was kind of just started spreading and then now we got the the youngsters in ace and dusk and they're doing their thing and these guys are fearless and hungry for it i mean i i went out painting with them on the first times and broad daylight five o'clock traffic at fairfax exit of the 10 freeway just doing throwies on the side people are like you know, I think it's one thing to, to to see graffiti on a wall, and I think that's another thing for to see people doing it in broad daylight on the freeway like that, like they do. And it's, I don't think they're, I don't think most people are ready to see that, you know, because it's, uh, I think it symbolizes almost like uh, things have gone out of control when you see these guys do. They're fearless, they're, they're fearless, and uh, but it's it's cool to have the the, the, the youngsters in that and pushing it. Um, yeah. It's a good group of guys. Yeah, vandalism progress. You know, vandalism paradise, uh, which kind of stems from. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, vandalism paradise. Vandalism paradise. Yeah, because I rock and I were living on the beach down there. You know, we felt like we were we were were vandals in paradise. Yeah. No, it is literally. I talk to people from all over the world, being on the west side, to because you know we we meet people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know, and they always say you're at the best place on it, and I go why. I guess I'm just 
We're, we might be ungrateful. We're just used to it. No, I'm not ungrateful. I mean, I know you're not ungrateful. You're out there every day watching the sunset with me. <laughs> that's, that's being grateful. You know how good we have <laughs> No, but I always ask them why. You know, and they go, well, I don't have this. Oh, you know, I'm so many miles from the beach. They might be in Italy or something. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, you guys have the mountains, the beach. Um, 72 and sunny and a cool breeze. It's always the bad weather. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful sunset almost every day of the year. And that never gets old. And you know, it's funny too because I'll be painting down there on the beach and you know, you can paint, but once that sun starts setting, people aren't interested in the art because Mother Nature will trump it, any artist any day of the week by this mm. beautiful sunset. You can never top that. It's always a showstopper. I always stop and I take my time and I watch that sun go down. Every day, I'm grateful for that. Every day, watch that sunset. So, what can what your fans expect this coming year from you? Oh goodness. Um, well, you know, it's hard to promise things in this game because there's so many obstacles to overcome and things that are outside of our control. But uh, I plan on just, you know, trying to get better at my craft and just developing my skills and you know I, I paint every day so um i feel like i've gotten better a lot in just this short time of three years and um you know even if i knew what i had in store i wouldn't tell me because i like it to be a surprise that's dope yeah. that's dope right there